Hi, I'm Brenda Kurt Wright. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for returning if you're coming back. And if you're new, welcome aboard. I do cognitive rehabilitation as a speech language pathologist with people with mild cognitive impairment and dementia. Today I'm talking about reminiscent therapy and it's a therapy that caregivers can do with their loved ones. And that's who I'm talking to mainly today. So I have put recommendations that I'm going to talk about right now in the comments below. So feel free to print them off or share them with anyone who you think would benefit. Reminiscent therapy is therapy that's been around since the 1970s for people with dementia. The way it works is by tapping into people's long-term memory. And so people with Alzheimer's and dementia have problems with new learning, but they often have the ability to retain knowledge of their youth and adolescence. And so this is stimulation to get them to recall that information. And the idea is to help them increase their personal identity, to have an enjoyable activity, and hopefully along the way increase their mood. It is done in groups and with individuals, and I'm talking really only about individuals today. It's the caregiver and their loved one. And the research, uh, there's been studies that have shown positive effects, but I'm really going to be talking about alzheimers.org and their recommendations for how you can do this at home. We are focusing on the research that shows benefit for people with dementia, which the benefits are helping to improve cognition, mood, and quality of life. And so there are some effects for positive outcomes. I want to talk about the way it's done. According to Alzheimer's.org, the way that you can do this at home is to ask open-ended questions. So an example of that would be, tell me about where you grew up, if you know the state. Tell me about Michigan. Tell me about New York. And give them some wait time. Wait and give them a chance to respond. So you definitely want to show patience when you're doing this. Also, leave room for emotion if they're happy about something that's wonderful if they're sad about it you want to maybe acknowledge that and say this does make you sad and it's okay to feel that way and to just affirm and acknowledge what they're experiencing if they become agitated just try to move on to the next question and maybe make a note of that point so that you know to possibly not revisit that in the future because we don't want to agitate anyone and you want to use objects such as photographs, videos, you can use audio recordings, you can use music that they like. Uh, if they have souvenirs, let them talk about that, tell you about that, oh, tell me what this is. And you could use smells and tastes of familiar things that, they, that you know that they like or that they liked in the past. And if they don't wanna do it, respect that and give them that room to just say no and then maybe revisit in the future. The places that this would take place would be mealtime, bedtime, bath time, when you're giving the medication, when maybe they're exercising, if they're walking or something of that nature. So during natural circumstances. And so again, take a look at the link below with a summary of recommendations that I have written. Share it with someone who you think might find it beneficial. Thank you very much for joining today and let me know in the comments if you found this helpful and subscribe to my channel if you would like more information on these type of topics. The goal is to keep giving you information that you can use at home. It doesn't take the place of therapy, of cognitive rehab, but uh, this information, it could be a supplement to therapy or it might also be a way to encourage you to seek out therapy. So thank you very much for joining and I look forward to seeing you next time. Okay, bye-bye.